Yeah. My husband was like, peanut butter. Mmm. <laughs> Lots of pieces. Can't tell the <laughs> shell from the nut. <laughs> Very nice, Claire. It's a sensitive period, too. Yeah. You know, and the tendency of man is to have a sense of order when they're young, and that's why they want to close the door on the, you know, the television. That's out of place. So mm -hmm. you don't put your coat on the chair. Mm -hmm. You don't put your umbrella over there. You, you know, there's places for everything. So we want to keep that within them, and we don't want them to ever lose that. We don't, they come to us sometimes in chaos, in a booming state of chaos, because their environment at home may be you know, just toys everywhere and no, no you know, no dinner time, bath time, mm -hmm. you know, sitting time with their parents, just whatever, mm -hmm. you know, in a rushing world. And so sometimes this is just exactly what their soul needs mm -hmm. to just say, ah, oh, this is exactly what I need. So the practical life are usually the first exercises that the child will need to gain independence once they have that independence and the sense of ah, you know, now I could do the, the work, then they move into the sensorial mm -hmm. and the other areas. Interesting. But so the three-year-old really resonates in this area. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the older children, you have steps that are like, you make the soap suds so that you can wash the clothes or wash the dish rags, you know, so they grate the soap suds and then they, you know, use the beaters to make them sudsy in the water and then mm -hmm. they get the little things and they wash. All those steps for the older child fulfill something within them. Mm -hmm. 
you know, just like you want them washing dishes when they're 14 or 15 years old. Give them the opportunities when they're young. Um, are there any, are there any questions about the Well, the, we were, we, I was going to mention the grace and courtesy lessons. Oh, yes, that's right, grace and courtesy. Yeah, and that's why when she asked Claire to say yes, please. Yeah, you know. sharing grace and courtesy with, you know, sharing food and, um, and um, also just, you know, without, you know, besides doing it with food, you know, we'll do lessons um, at circle time with, um, you know, beating exercises on how to shake hands and make eye contact and, um, And then they can go anywhere in society and they can be accepted and feel good uh, that they can get a positive response from people, you know, other than their family. Yeah. Rebecca and I did, um, a, at, at the beginning with the peace table, when we introduced the peace right. table, we had to role play. And so we pretended we were two children on the playground that had just had a fight. And so we came in, you know, we sat down at the peace table and I took a turn first and put my right hand over my heart and the left hand on the table to show it's my turn first. Then when I said my piece, then it was Rebecca's turn, and she said, you know, well, you didn't play with me. You know, they loved it, but that was the biggest um, experience for them to do that. Sometimes I would think they were making it up as they were going along out there. Well, <laughs> Just to use them. Yeah. Yeah. We got to go. Can you tell us more about that whole process? Yes. Yeah. It's part of Montessori's peace education, and it was uh, fulfilled and, and kind of promulgated by Ursula Thrush, who, who developed a peace education for all children, and it goes along with the geography. You know all the cultures. You, you know, know everything. That, everybody has the same tendencies to eat and, you know, live in a house or live in a, an abode and have clothes and have transportation. Everybody fulfills them in different ways. But you have to also know how to interact with each other. You have to be able to say what you feel and be able to say it in a way that's not going to be hurtful or harmful. And that's what we say too. You may not, you have to have eye contact and you may not say something to try to hurt somebody. You're to say what you feel. And so you help them a lot with those lessons. And they obviously get them because I hear them out there. And they, they're talking to each other very genuinely about what, it ha what had happened. Then they always leave with shaking hands and a smile, or they stay at the table and they keep up. And sometimes you get that left hand on the table because they're so upset, the right hand over the heart. <laughs> but then, as they understand the other person and what they were thinking, then they say, oh, okay, you just wanted to play with me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you can keep back and back and back and back and back and back and back. You know, back and forth. It just goes... The first one says something, and the other one responds to that. And then this one responds to that, and this one responds to that. Sometimes you have to help them. The child that doesn't know why they did it. Yeah. Actually, I put one outside. We had, we had first just one inside, but I realized most of the conflicts occur on the playground. <laughs> so I have one outside now, and there's a bench right next to it, so I can kind of sit there and act like um, you're not listening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second one, I think, is just like you know, if I sense that they're having some difficulty, I'll, I'll go over and I'll help guide them. Well, it seems like something that we need, in our household, we need to set it up because mm -hmm. me and Claire, we always have fun conflict and uh -huh. I thought that would be a good place to uh, catch up these differences. Yeah, I think you're going to say there, you'll really want it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think know, I can kind of learn more from them of what do they do at the peace table because when they have a conflict, it seems, mm -hmm. you know, other you need to talk about it. And, and we've always, we have a certain spot in the house where we sit down, but I didn't know exactly how the peace table works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we don't want to give them the words and have them just mimic us. Right. We want them to feel from themselves. And sometimes, it, you know, you'll have to say, well, how did that make you feel? Right, because they usually start out, well, he did this for me. Right. You know, he wouldn't let me do that. Yeah, and you say, <laughs> okay, what, what did you feel when he wouldn't let you do that? And then she'd say, I felt bad. Well, why did you feel bad? Because I want to play with him. And then Joseph, she wanted to play with you. You know, how does that make you feel? Well, good. Oh, 
you feel good because you want to play. Now, you know, what would you like to do to play with Abby? You know, what she sh should she do? Get the words from them all the time. Okay. And it's always pulling from them the emotions instead of saying, now you should feel bad or you should be doing this or you should say sorry or you should <laughs> say, because that's what we don't want. Mm -hmm. We do want to pull them into, oh, she wanted to do that. This is a good thing, you know. If somebody says, no, I wanted to hurt them. <laughs> then we just, well, okay, there we go. We got to take this child away from and we got to talk to them by ourselves and say, why would you ever do that? Because you don't mean that. You would never do that. We'd never imagine that you'd want to hurt anybody. And then we get out. I just want to play. Oh, that's what you should have said. You want another chance? That's so it is, but you know what? It works so well. I mean, by the time they're in upper grades, they know what they're supposed to say, and you know, and what they can't say, and you don't have the difficulties. In fact, when the children went from Montessori to the high schools, they said, it's funny because you can talk to people and they look at you like, this is way too real for me. <laughs> you don't want to deal yeah, with that. I don't want to, uh, whoa, I don't want to deal with that. And, and my sons would say, you know, the children I grew up with in Montessori, were the same kids that I, that I remember in high school. You know, they were the same kids that I remembered in Montessori. But the kids that I just met in high school, they change every day. And they couldn't figure them out. So there's a benefit. Anyway, we kept you too long. Okay, very last question. What's that little corner? Oh, that is um, a quiet corner. Um, basically, just a place for them to rest. And, oh, okay. um, I'm going to change it next year. This is just like the space that I mm -hmm. found for mm -hmm. them. It's basically if they need to relax or just kind of take a break, they can lay down and rest mm -hmm. for a little bit. But next year, I'd really like to have where the reading corner is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. kind of a bigger area, like not with the couch, maybe put some like pillows to make it more of like a cushioned area yeah. um, where they can rest and look at books. So mm -hmm. kind of like combine the two, mm -hmm. and um, but have it be more inviting. I mean, the children will lay down on that and, and rest, but I'd like to have more of an inviting area that I have to, to find some pillows and other things. Sometimes when they can't decide on what work they want to do, and they're kind of in the way, mm -hmm. it's a way for them to watch what's going on and to not feel like they have to do busy work, which yeah. we don't want them to do, and that gives them enough time to decide and then it also keeps you know where they are. They're not like hiding behind a shelf somewhere. Mm -hmm. So they don't want that either.